Well, let's talk about uh, what's happening in the world of sports. The Minister of Youth and Sport Development, Sunday Diary, has given an assurance that the new national sports industry policy will stand the test of time. He said this on Tuesday at the presentation of the national sports industry policy, and Diary, who received a copy of the draft document, described the event as a milestone and one that has the capacity to change the perception of sports business in Nigeria. Let me get your own view on this. A lot of investors are always afraid to invest in sports in Nigeria because they don't usually see returns on their investment but nonetheless look this is a way to make sure that there is a win-win situation if you do invest in the right set of athletes you, you invest in the right set of teams especially our own MPFL if we upgrade the class of our football mm -hmm. to where it's meant to be in terms of our com contemporaries in Africa talking about I believe the biggest league right now in Africa is the South African League the PSL if we can upgrade to that level have teams have their own personal sponsors we have the revamp of stadiums. We have, if we can have up to 10 FIFA standard stadiums in Nigeria in states alone, I mean, that would be fantastic. That would be great for the state of football in Nigeria. Talking about other um, sports as well, boxing, badminton, tennis. Look, we need to invest in all this and we need to do more with our athletes. We need to put them on that platform so that they can grow. And, and one major reason is that we need to start learning how to grow talents in here in Nigeria and not just giving them the window to go to the diaspora and making it over there. All right, joining us to discuss this is John Akonji, the Special Advisor on Media to the Minister of Sports and Youth Development, Sunday Diary. Good to have you with us, um, John. Good morning. Happy to be on the program. Good morning. I'm Barakad Salah. Oh, yes. Barakad Salah to you, too. And I hope you're keeping safe. Uh, definitely on you, too. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing our best. Now, the national sports industry policy, this is a great approach to changing the narrative of how sports is seen in the country. Please take us through the major areas that will be improved upon. Yeah, thank you very, yeah, thank you very much. The basic, the basic thing is the issue of taking sports away from recreation to business. You remember that various committees were set up to midwife process, and after undergoing a lot of uh, consultation, after reviewing and updating and doing so many things in the area of legalities and all that, they then came up with this policy that is essentially toward towards making business in Nigeria business. In other words, if you are into sports one way or the other, you are going to be encouraged to invest heavily in sports, in infrastructure, in development of the athletes, in partnership with the ministry, and so many other areas. But what is most important is the fact that for the very first time, there's going to be incentives for those who are contributing to sports development in Nigeria. And that is where the issue of the public-private partnership comes in. A situation where government has decided that the way to go is to partner with the private sector to ensure an accelerated development of sports in Nigeria. Now, talking about um, the private sector now, let's look at football and the Nigerian Professional Football League. Would this have a huge effect on the Nigerian League and how would, how would there be a turnaround? Because most people are clamoring for a private league in the country. Do you think this will also help improve on this? Well, uh, already, even before this report was submitted, the, the minister had, had come up with a, a lot of initiative now, now to improve the Nigerian Football League. And one of the things uh, that has that been uh, decided is the fact that there has to be proper licensing for football clubs in Nigeria so that these clubs will be run like professional clubs that they are, like is the case in Europe, in America, and Asia, where football is a big business. There is not going to be a situation where people just wake up overnight and begin to do things that are untoward, things that are not in line with the laid down rules of the game. So definitely the situation where if you are a professional club, you must be quoted on the stock exchange, you must declare your profit, you must, be, you must insure your players, you must have youth clubs, you must do all the basic things that are enshrined in the law setting of the Nigerian Professional League. And the minister has made it repeatedly clear to the Nigerian Football League board that, look, this is a time to make all those fundamental changes that Nigerians have desired over the years. All right. And is there also anything for the athletes uh, who will be representing Nigeria as well? You know, we, we did, even before COVID, 
there was the issue of, uh, I'm, I'm sure you're asking specifically as it relates to the Olympics or exactly. feature? Relating to the Olympics, sir. Huh? Yeah, but one, one of the things that the minister has decided to do is that in the next, uh, in the next uh, few, few months, there's going to be, there's going to be an assemblage of 20 athletes at the High Performance Center in Port Harcourt to begin the process of preparing Nigerian athletes for the Olympics. Okay. You remember that uh, there's still uh, the protocol that was uh, initiated by the ministry, which has been submitted to the uh, PTF, and eventually the minister will have to go to FET. You remember that it was the minister that advised the government on the need to call up the National Sports Festival as a result of, of the outbreak of uh, COVID-19. And so when, the, when the, the lockdown has not been eased completely on sports, is looking at innovative ways of ensuring that athletes begin gradually to begin training so that they do not get too rusty when the uh, final ban on sports is lifted. And one of the things he said is, look, we can begin with non-contact sports so that gradually we are easing up like others are doing in other, in other parts of the world. All right, you know, there's no way we would do sports and want to be great in the world if we don't start off from the grassroots. What is the plan of the Ministry of Sports and Youth Development concerning grassroots sports? One of, one, of the things, uh, one of the things that the minister has done is that he has set up a committee to review all the uh, other events that either two were strong nursery for youth development in Nigeria. Look at the school sports, look at the grassroots, look at all the various... Uh, uh, bodies that are involved in grassroots development. Talk about football academies, talk about boxing academies. He's looking at them holistically. And one of the things he did before COVID was that he visited most of the academies. He went to Yenogwa, he went to Lagos, he went to Casina. You know, he went to places where athletes are known, to, where states where they have comparative advantage in one sport or the other. And one of the things he's saying is that, look, for example, every state has a strong area and a sport that is identified with them. For example, you look at Yenegua, you just think of swimming. You look at uh, Bayesa State, you think of boxing, you think, think of wrestling. You think of Lagos, you think of boxing. Think of the North, you think of uh, traditional wrestling. So every state has an area where they have comparative advantage. And it's set up a committee already that is looking at how to revive not just our, our school sports, but also the headmaster's cup, the principal's cup, and of course the uh, the institutions of uh, 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 that university games, yeah. which in the past were strong avenues for discovering Nigerian athletes. But you are not going to start at the top. You are going to start at the grassroots, and that's why the issue of school sport is very germane to the plans of the ministry. All right. With all of this, can we boldly say that better times, good times are here again for sports in Nigeria? Unequivocally, without sounding like, uh, uh, like uh, uh, a press singer, the, the, the truth of the matter is that a new, sport, a new dawn is here, mm. not just only for sports, but for youth generally. Because the minister believes that if you mobilize the youth, if you engage the youth, it can reduce crime, it can lead to en employment, and it can lead to revenue generation for the country. Mm. Without doubt, this is a new dawn, and the minister is unequivocally unrevocably committed to ensuring that all the changes that have been planned come to fruition as soon as possible. Well, thank you very much. And I'm sure uh, the youths out there are quite excited with this information from you, Joshua Akonji. Thank you very much. All right. My please, pleasure to be on the program. Have a nice continue day. to stay safe. All right. That was a special advisor, uh, and of course, on media uh, to the Minister of Sports and Youth Development, speaking on the policy that was um, submitted to the Minister Sunday Diary. And we're all hoping and looking forward to great times now for the world of sports.